There's some interesting stuff in here, actually. There really is. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad, and behind me is a house in an undisclosed location where we are doing an estate sale. I am looking at it for the first time. I understand the family kept quite a lot of the small items, so this may just be invitational. I knew this fellow when he was alive. He was a really interesting collector. He had some amazing ephemera and historic things that went to the State Historic Museum, as they should have that had to do with the history of this area, which I'll divulge at a certain point. And it is just really nice to have the opportunity to help them with whatever is left. So we're gonna go see what's left because I haven't seen inside this very sweet house in, gosh, 20 years, I think. There's some garden art there that can be sold. Those are pretty good. That's nice to see right off the bat. And in here, well, a little bit of patio furniture. Things were let go over the summer, it looks like. We've got a plow wheel. More garden art. Okay, we're gonna duck our head. That's a strange approach there. And looking into the back alley at a really cool looking 67 Mustang. Let's see if I can show you that. That is not part of this sale, unfortunately, but that red car is pretty hot. All right, so let's go in here. I left it ajar. All right, so we're gonna do a little basement area first, I guess. Right away I see some Seattle World's Fair things. This is what it looked like during the fair, 1962. That's the Science Center. It was the US Science Center, now the Pacific Science Center. And the Space Needle, of course. These arches by the Science Center are very famous architecture from that spot in time. Let's see what else we have here. See, this guy liked a lot of historic ephemera. Space Needle again. Look how small everything around it is. Now that's all buildings. Tons of people living right near there. But in 1962, it was just a big open space to work with. And there it is in its original color. The Space Needle was originally orbit orange, and at approximately 74 square acres, this was one of the smallest World Fair sites ever. It only covered that much ground, but boy, did they pack a lot of interesting things into there. It was a huge success. It was the second World's Exposition to take place in Seattle after this one, the Alaska Yukon Pacific Exposition, and this is a fruit label. We see these a lot, but they're neat. An antler home for sale. These are a bunch of railroad matchbooks. They have been flattened, but I like them in the presentation frame. And speaking of railroad, we have one of the steps that you would step up on in the to get into the train. This may be an Amtrak. I noticed that it's blue. The Northwest Lines, it could be Great Northern as well, but it doesn't have any markings on it, which is too bad because they're more valuable when they do. But that is really neat. It's good to be seeing some interesting old things. I know this fellow was a collector, and there's new and old, uh, but showcases are empty. That's unfortunate. I know that he had some really cool stuff, but you know, family first, and if that's where it's supposed to go, then I hope that they really treasure it the way that he did, because I know that he really enjoyed his collections very much. A Little bit of a dark room here. There's a piece of Sooner glass from Oklahoma. This is the one that isn't the swan. Let's see what the tag says. Pre-Chihuly glass, very unique, 3750. Well, it is pre-Chihuly and it is, well, not entirely unique. They did make a lot of these, but it's cool. It's interesting. The porthole here is a fake, but people like those for decorating. This is also a fake. You see this ginger jar all the time now, and it is, I should say fake. It's just not old, that's the point. 
Schlitz beer trash can and uh, oh, a cheese head hat. A couple of milk can and beer barrel tractor seat seats. Somebody might think those are fun. A little bit of old barbed wire. There are collectors for certain patterns, and that does look rather old if you look at the spacing and the way that it's done. This looks like it's 1800s. Uh, nothing much in here. Einstein. Player piano is really neat. They're not the easiest thing to sell, but we might have somebody for the rolls. And who knows, once in a while, someone will take a player piano. They're just not fun to move. And this old adjustable chair looks like something that would have been used in an office. You notice also some big figures. These have to do with the Dickens of a Christmas they celebrate in this area. And I see some art. I know there's other pieces. If this is old, this could be something of fair value. Let me take it down where we can actually see in a better light without reflection for you. Okay, it's a reproduction, unfortunately. You can tell because the calendar isn't raised, but they're very cute. The Garden City bottling, yes, this is very valuable if it was original. So we'll just hang that right back up where it was. Seascape, metronome. Some old clipping from the Seattle Daily Times. Let's see if we can see what that significance is. Everything in rentals where Seattle rents the Henry Broderick Incorporated Rental Managers in the Hogue Building. Yes, that's right. He, uh, Broderick was really something in Seattle real estate and in terms of historic preservation. This is brass, kind of nice. And oh, I shouldn't uh, fail to note the mount. And there was a deer mount over there, but that got put there next to the Henry Broderick Home for Sale sign. We'll have to figure out uh, what to do with those pieces. I know that we'll have someone interested. Here's a cute little Art Deco smoking stand. I like that. And a carboy. And what else is there? Let's see, we went that way already. We're going to look in here. It looks like there's a table base. It's very dark. A mirror and a door. Is there any light? This house is very, very dark and I'm not finding a lot of light. So I'm going to have to come back to this. Books look fairly straightforward. The big Seattle city guide might have some value at this point. Some of those old city guides do because they have information on long gone businesses and other things that can be of use for historic or legal reasons, for example. Okay, we're going to go upstairs and see what else there is. This looks like it's in good shape. Nice old Coke crate. Yakima, Washington. Cascade Columbia Beverages. It's nice when they have a very distinct uh, thing on it. Here's my friend Stephanie and Bo, the Wonder Dog. They are here with me looking around and checking out. What do you think of the upstairs? There's some interesting stuff in here, actually. There really is. I'm glad to hear that. I was kind of... I'm glad to hear that because I wasn't... Too many good here. Just so you know, there's a TV in there. Oh, well, a lot of people repurpose those 1920s yeah. cabinets for exactly that. So that's kind of neat to show everybody. It is a great way to use an old cabinet like that because not that many people keep pies or dishes or things anymore. Yeah, we sure did. Cool. There's a little uh, chamber pot and it says, passengers, please do not throw this out the train. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that if that's real, that could be valuable. Yes, it's a... Well, P-bombs apparently are not a new thing then. I didn't realize that people were doing that back in the railroad days. <laughs> <laughs> Passengers, please. That must be from a Clydesdale or something very large. And then over here we've got a kitchen clock, a regulator clock, and a nice wall phone. So those are all neat pieces.
Here's an oval. Oh, that's a mountain scene. That's pretty hand painted. The bronze vase looks substantial and that's older. And then the carousel horse isn't as old, but it's very nice. And even the newer pieces, those are old, looks like Victorian mahogany pieces with the red velvet, but um, even the newer pieces definitely have a feel. This house was very well tended and well loved for a long time. And I think a lot of this furniture came from the parents. Then there's an old oak round table. These still sell. I remember when a set like this, if the chairs, these are replacement chairs, but the table's original. It might be worth a few hundred now. It used to be those would go for several hundred on their own. Cool movie poster. When in Southern California, visit Universal City Studios. On oh, the old newspaper box, people are buying these now because people are taking them all down and the old round ones from the 50s you don't really see anymore. And then this is Arcade, the same company that made a lot of the cast iron toys, made this piece, which is a coffee grinder, because again, cast iron on the top. This will be from about 1900. And a lot of people buy these now because they grind espresso beans in it. It feels like this works pretty well. Fishing lures and such, that looks like newer stuff that it was for using. And this piece is probably silver plate, but nice. Little uh, caddy. Oh yes, very cute. Oh, unfortunately, I do believe this one's a reproduction because it's thinner. There was a real one like this, and it's very heavy and very valuable, and not very delicious, young man. Do not go snorting everything that you see falling on the floor. <laughs> okay, well, here's some neat stuff. Copper fire extinguisher, these are popular now, and Hollywood Regency looking. This little magazine stand and a tuffet. I don't think we are to sell the pot-bellied stove, but isn't it pretty? This is a globe. I think this is just a globe. I don't think this opens into a bar, which would be even better. And it looks like it's fairly recent. It's USSR, so maybe 1980s. That's not brand new by any stretch. Let's see if we can tell. One thing to look for is the reunification of Germany in 1989. And we see that in this map, sorry it's so dark in here, Germany is one country, so this is 1990s. This on the other hand is 1890s. It's an interesting mix of Mission Oak and Art Nouveau styles. And you can see the big wide rays in the oak there. So you know it's got age. Here's a neat refrigerator. Nice old mirror above that. And then we come into the dining room and you've got these 1920s pieces of furniture the Hartback Mahogany dining set. The base of this looks like an Empire library table. And then above it we have an overmantel mirror with shelves, which is very handsome. I sold one similar to that in Florida for 250 or 300. This is another Humphrey painting. This is quite large. And I think the Kachina doll maker is really a very well-painted painterly subject. It obviously was given a place of prominence. Here's our signature again. So this is something I imagine might uh, sell for a good price. We've got a parlor in here. This was a formal house built in 1891. So it's dressed in that type of furniture. And boy, there is quite a lot of it. I'm gonna have a lot of picture taking to do. Here's a bridge lamp that I think is rather special. And then this student lamp also appears to be old. So those have some nice value. We have oval frame pictures up here. Blind Pew of Treasure Island. 
This appears to have been broken and it was resin. So no big deal to begin with. This clock has an 1878 patent date and it's very simple, which I think is good because people are not as interested in clocks as they used to be, so simple is better. And here's another backsplash without the base. But it does look nice. I see why he put it here. It does give a certain feel to the mantle area. Little carved Chinese table is cute. This is a reproduction. People will buy repros of those though. And then there's a series of four folk paintings. They're nice, they're done in a painterly manner. They are an artist that is signed, but I don't think this is someone that's known. Selhurst. I will look into Selhurst, but definitely they're all pipe smokers and they're Bavarian and other places in Europe, I guess, are what they represent. And then look at the cute shape of this. Now I want it to be fabulously pink because I'm thinking Florida, but look at the shell shape in the back of this chair. It's 1930s, it's, well, it, actually it's probably 1920s looking at the swan arms. Look at this really great shape for a chair. I want it to be fabulously pink so I could take it to Florida, but it is a nice shell back, really graceful arms. The legs are carved in a pretty traditional manner, but I don't really think that that matters because the overall effect is still somehow blendable with modern, at least in the cottage style. And then we have this, which is a nice little English fireplace screen. Those can be nice on a table as a little divider. This grandfather clock is old and it's pretty. I don't know that we're going to have a big customer for it, but we're going to do our best. I uh, will have to do some research. It looks like it could be 19th century in all likelihood. American Victorian chair here. I like the damascene on the upholstery. Again, spoon carving, so this is going to be an East Lake design from about 1880. And here we have a mannequin wearing some sort of a uniform, so that's pretty cool. There's an oak chair here. I like this cane chair with the upholstery. Desks are good things to have right now. This is very utilitarian, but it's from about 1900, and it's just a very simple American Oak school desk of that time, but that's what a lot of people need right now. And then we've got this chest of drawers and this, which are Mission Revival from about 1990. I like this stuff. It was good quality. It's got a good look. And I think that the design is really timeless, even though they are technically reproductions. Here's another type of school desk. This would have been more for a school child in a row of these back in about 1890 to 1900. They sell for usually under a hundred dollars. And here's this guy. He's got a little bit of a zombie appeal in the face. Okay, this is not a mannequin. This guy is animatronic. That's really fun and a little creepy. Let's see what it says about him. Congratulations on buying your new Scare the Neighbors animated Halloween figure. You are the proud owner of a Jemmy animated Halloween figure. Please read over to the directions carefully before using your new figure. Hmm. This is interesting and disturbing and cool. American Legion in Centralia, Washington is a very significant place because four of the Legionnaires were killed in the Centralia Massacre. And this fellow was a local historian and definitely he and I spoke on that subject. So he was aware. We've got a razor strop here. Mostly just usual stuff in this area. Okay, I like the cat print. <laughs>
that face. And this looks like it's just a closet. Some of our younger thrifters are starting to recognize these slice of life plates, these deco 1980s looking things. And I thought they were cool when they came out and I believe they are starting to have a following, but no one at this sale was willing to pay $4 for this one. So it will end up being donated and end up at a thrift store in Centralia, Washington, I'm sure. And they'll probably sell it for a dollar or two. So, you know, you, sometimes when I'm done with an estate sale, I tell people, oh, the stuff that's getting donated is horrible. Stay away from the thrift stores in the area for a while. But in this case, I think that some of it's going to be kind of decent and have some local interest as well. There's uh, the 1936 movie show. There's a great old theater here in town called the Fox Theater. And a friend of mine is restoring it. He's leading the drive to restore it. And it will be a really great place for shows and even uh, conventions and entertainment. So uh, this little town is growing up. But in the meantime, while I'm thinking of it, uh, please hit that subscribe button. And if you are interested in a membership, you can hit join and there'll be a little video that talks about what the memberships entail. And we also appreciate it if you thumbs up this video and click that bell to be notified of future videos. So let's get back to here. All right, here we go up into the last area, which is the upstairs bedrooms. There's another one of those chairs. And a Windsor chair and a brass bed. I like the brass bed. I like the detail. It's not all curly hue. I like this very straightforward approach and it looks like it's big enough to hold a decent sized mattress. So that might go. A little wash stand. This is a very basic one. We'll probably get 40 or $50 for that. The gesture is interesting. This looks like a piece that's been very seriously refinished and new knobs, but originally from about 1900, I think. Let's see if we can tell by opening the drawer and looking at the dovetails. Yeah, might be later than that. Now that I look at it, it's not very deeply carved in the feet. And here, macrame. Hey, who out there likes macrame? I know we've got a few folks. There is an oak office chair that needs some love. This guy is having a problem. Neat old Pledge of Allegiance from about 1910 framed chromolithograph. Not uncommon, but pretty. And then in here, it looks like just some very basic furniture. I like the cowboy lamp, but it's not really old. Yeah, this is just kind of a spare room. This is sweet though. An up-to-date store, they're playing shopkeeper. This is something that uh, I remember kids in the neighborhood doing, all of us, although we didn't look like that. Okay, when you go up stairs, and then if you go left, uh -huh. and around or around the bathroom, there's a clothes closet. Oh yes, and there's a Mariner's coat in there? Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, those can be worth money. I'll definitely look. Thank you. Well, Stephanie pointed this out, and I had overlooked it. It's Seattle Mariners. It's the current logo. But these sell online. This is something you need to look for if you're a reseller, of course, is uh, anything sporting. Because this stuff, if you buy it at the stadium, is really expensive. So it has a resale market. I like this. This is from about 1970. I always like the Costco step stools. And... Other than that, just some utility furniture, and I think that is, oh, wait. Yes, we've been there. We'll have to see if this is real. It probably is a reprint. That's an old dollar bill, if it is real. Well, I have a lot of reading to do. Actually, I have a lot of pictures to take. I've got to start working on this. We need to get it sold, and we have about a week to do it. So. I'm going to do the best I can for my friend's family, and we will hope for the best. I am back at the estate sale house. Now I can show you because we are at the end of the estate sale process. So we just did the before, and this is the after.
It's been remodeled, but this is a cute historic home. <clears throat> this is 811 E Street in Centralia. It will be going on the market, by the way. It'll have to be cleaned. You'll see that when we go in. But this house was originally built in 1891. As it says right here on the historic placard. What you won't see on the porch <clears throat> that you saw at the beginning is, well, really anything, because we sold everything on the porch. I was very pleasantly surprised by that. Everything was in solid condition, but a lot of it had sat outside for a while, so that was nice to see go. In fact, we did really well. You're going to see not a whole lot of stuff. There's no grandfather clock. There's no paintings of people smoking pipes. There's <clears throat> no shell back chair, no lamp. This chair came from another room. The overmantle sold. They only went for a hundred apiece, but <clears throat> we felt that was pretty good because they are just toppers to other things, but you can do some great stuff with them. The people who bought the one were gonna use it in their bathroom above their sink instead of just a standard mirror so they'd have shelving. The bust is fairly new, that's why he didn't sell. That's almost all the books we have left. We have one other bookcase full, but we started with a room full, well, a wall full anyway. This very pretty set, it's hard to sell upholstered furniture at an estate sale if it's a specific color and style. I had calls on it, I had it on Facebook Marketplace. I'm not sure why, but it did not go. A pair of hoop back chairs are still left and I'll turn the light on here. Now, <clears throat> dining chairs and tables are harder to sell these days than they used to be. And that's because people are not entertaining as formally. But here is the problem with this set. It's very pretty. It should be worth three to 500, typically at retail. So someone should have bought it. But look at that splat in the back, the open work there. It has been turned upside down. It was mounted incorrectly. I, it's tight, but I suspect what happened is somebody broke the top rail and re-glued it and put it in backwards. And that's why they're still here. That and floral upholstery, which is just a little out of style and a little dirty, and that means redoing these. Now, these pads are easy to pop out and reupholster. So honestly, somebody will end up with a great deal at auction, and they'll have a lovely set of chairs. These chairs are just a little worn, and again, they're a blue-gray upholstery in January in Washington when the sky is the same color, so people are not as interested. Cute little Victorian walnut solid splat chair. Look how these almost seem like faces. And some of them were carved deliberately to look like parrots and such. That's something you can look for in the back splats of old chairs. These have a neat design. But it's small. It's a ladies chair. That's what they were called because women were a lot smaller. And it's rather short for modern living. These, I think, were just not well upholstered. So you'll notice a theme is uh, upholstery is hard to sell if it's not exactly right. I want to stop on this guy for a minute. This fellow is a famous Washington architect who also was a historian and the fellow in this house knew him and had several items related to him, many of which we sold. His name was Henry Broderick and he was definitely himself important in Washington history. He designed a lot of the modernist buildings in Seattle. One floor lamp left, the other one sold. I'm standing where the bed used to go and we found a lovely wall full of mold. This is one problem. This looks horrible and this house looked very cute with the stuff in it and now it looks terrible, but that's because it's time for cleaning and replacing perhaps of the rug in this room. You know, older folks have a hard time keeping up with that sort of stuff and you just have to kind of let it be until you reach a point where you can do something about it. That chest of drawers back there is a hard sell. It's maple. The clothes, we sold some considering that it wasn't much and it was men's. I was happy. Most of the stuff's gone from the bathroom. And in fact, speaking of bathrooms, we're going to go around the corner and go upstairs. I'm not opening closets because they're all empty. The wood stove is a new one. I could have sold it. I tried to sell it. I asked 200. I felt that was a fair price given the expense of them. 
and the fact that it is rated to be used in a new house, which is important, especially in the Northwest where they can have burn bans and certain types of stoves can't be used. However, it just was more money than the folks who came today wanted to spend on that piece, but they sure bought a lot of other things that were nice surprises. We're going upstairs now. You'll remember there was furniture in these rooms. Well, they could not figure out how to get the box spring and mattress down the stairs, nor did they want them, so that will be a trick for the junk haulers. But that's it. Brass bed is gone. Everything in the bathroom is sold. Everything in the spare bedroom is sold. This was a nice surprise. There are not very many estates where you wipe out the upstairs because first of all, people don't like to take things downstairs. And secondly, a lot of times the stuff upstairs is sort of the forgotten place in an old house where you've got the master bedroom downstairs and nobody ever goes up there and they don't think about it much. Sometimes it's where you find the best stuff in a house too, by the way, resellers. Okay, this corner had a showcase. It had a, gosh, just a bunch of stuff. I don't even remember everything that was there. I just know that it's all gone. And um, one thing I didn't really mention as I was showing the things that are still here is look at all the stuff that is not in this room. All of the shelving sold, all of the uh, tables and the cabinet, everything are gone. So we we're very pleased with that. These sell well now, but this one had such a bad water stain, no one wanted to take on the rehab. Look how few smalls there are left in the house. The family really didn't leave us a lot of small items to begin with, but wow, so much is gone. And if I want Turkish coffee, I still have something to make it in. These are tin and they're not actually copper and that's why they don't sell very fast because people are onto that. I put books in the kitchen because we sold so many bookshelves and there were so many books and then we sold a ton of books. So you'll notice no art on the walls, all of the art sold. It was nice, it was painterly. It was not a famous artist, but it was pretty good for what it was. Upholstered furniture, again, very pretty sweet set. Hardly ever sat on. I doubt, I suspect it was from the family. I doubt mother and grandmother sat on it too much. Uh, this chair could use new padding on the arms and it's just not the type of upholstery that people buy anymore. Solid colors, if you're doing upholstery, unless someone special orders something wild, stick to solid neutral colors because it is hard to sell I think that's why this is still here. I really tried to clean it up. I think it's a wonderful piece. This old recliner with the leather straps. I think this will do well at au auction because it is unique, but it was reupholstered in the early 70s in avocado, which is just absolutely not the right shade for the era that it was originally made. It's close, but it's just off and it shows. A uh, white bookshelf, a couple of bar stools, those were shoved under the bar the wholesale. I think people just didn't notice them. But no television cabinet. The TV didn't sell, but that's kind of typical. Everyone's got one now. This little desk, desks, every desk in here sold except this one. And I think it's because it's got the brown antiquing, again, a bad 1970s makeover. Hard to get off and people don't like that. They want the original wood. And then the oak table and chairs. The chairs are 1990s. The table is old. The table's somewhat worn. And it didn't have any leaves. So really, it's, it would be something people would use in a breakfast nook rather than as a real dining table. And most people just aren't buying for that purpose right now, it seems. A lot fewer shelves. And just a lot less stuff in general. The stool didn't sell. I better take the tag off of that. I always take the tags off this stuff if we're leaving this for someone else to take to auction or donation because that's why you see no price tags on the merchandise right now either. But the truth behind that is that if you don't take the tags off, the auction house will say, eh, you already had a sale, why do I want this stuff? And as you're seeing, there's perfectly nice things that someone will pay something for. They're very usable. You know, a lot of this could end up donation as well. 
There is no cedar chest anymore, that's sold. The corner cabinet, one of them went, which is surprising because there were no shelves to them. Almost everything on this wall is gone, all the cute stuff, which is great. That's our purpose, that's why we were here. A lot of books sold down here. In this room, you can't tell visually, but uh, let me just say, you. <laughs> this room, it doesn't really smell bad, but there is obviously mold. And some people are really, really not cool with mold. They can't deal with it. It's bad for them. They'll have medical issues. It's just not cool. And so a lot of people won't buy in the moldy basement. And to show you that that's, I mean, I wipe mold off a fair number of things. And you can see on these old piano rolls, they had a water leak down here. Basements tend to be dank in the Northwest anyway. The player piano did not sell, which is unfortunate. They used to sell for $2,800 to $3,500. And in appraisals, I still can value them that way because once in a while you'll sell one, but they're hard to move. Nobody wants to move a piano anymore. So no bites there. These had the mold effect. That was not a good thing. So did a lot of the books that are left here, but really this is it. This is the extent, an ironing board and a washing basket. Everyone wanted the appliances, but they go with the house, realtor said, and the realtor is my friend and a contact uh, by the name of Max Vogt, V-O-G-T with Windermere Real Estate. The reason I mentioned that is this house is going to be on the market and houses here are becoming more and more desirable. We're halfway between Seattle and Portland. And in addition to people moving down in the, who are in the antique industry and like old houses, there's starting to be a lot more employment in this area. Uh, it's becoming a distribution center between Seattle and Portland. So, oh, I see one more price tag. Here's one more I'm gonna peel off, $10 price. I was not afraid to price things for the public because you know, I gave them good deals, but even though it was a one day sale and the purpose was mainly just to clear the house, the idea was to make as much money as we can for the client and for ourselves. And I'm happy that we did that. I am going to have a seat, which I have de definitely earned and turn this around and say, ah, this recliner really is nice. Well, thank you so much for being with me again. I'm George the Antique Nomad on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Yes, and YouTube, and glad to see you. We'll be back with more adventures soon, and have a state sale will travel. So who knows, I might be having one near you. I got to meet a couple of viewers this time. It was really nice. So thanks for coming, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!